Welcome back to 40s Vintage. Today we're taking a look at Josie's engine. So of course we can hand crank the tractor, but it goes a lot better if we have a battery in here. That goes right in this compartment here. Got a gas tank over here, battery sits right here, but there's a problem. These battery cables are destroyed, completely unsafe to use. So step one, replace the battery cables. So before we try and start it, we want to see if we are going to build some oil pressure. So I'm just going to turn it over without worrying about starting. Watch the gauge. Hopefully the gauge works. Maybe the gauge doesn't work. So the smart thing to do is to systematically go through, check to see if we have spark, make sure we have compression, but I think I'm just gonna hit it with some starting fluid. Um, hold this. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so she didn't want fire up. I put my spark tester on it and we have no spark. So I'm pretty sure that means that our coil is bad for our distributor. Uh, we'll take a look at those in a minute, but the first thing I want to do is I want to check to make sure we have compression on the cylinders. That's something we've never done on this. So let's get to that. Okay, so things are going to be a lot easier to get to if we take this hood and grill off. So there's a couple bolts down there, bolts onto the dashboard up here, and in theory, we should be able to lift it off and set it off to the side. The gas tank is up in here, but it's empty, so it should be nice and light. That's what we're about to do. Okay, so right here is our coil. Right below that is our distributor and mounted up front, nice and inconvenient. I'm betting this coil is probably no good uh, and the points in there are probably no good either. So I'm gonna order some parts. And in case you've ever wondered what a tractor without its lid on looks like, still kind of looks like a tractor. <laughs> So we have low compression on all the cylinders. Add a little ATF to them, let them soak. Well, let's see how it did. All right, that's about 85. 55, not good. Seventy-five. Not great. Sixty. All right. 
right, so compression's better, but still pretty low, at least on some of the cylinders. So I think our next step is to check the valves, make sure they're seating properly. They probably have a bunch of crud in them. We may need to pull them out, give this thing a valve job. They may just need to be adjusted. I've not really delved into this part of an engine before. I obviously know the concept, but I've never pulled them apart. So the valves on this engine, uh, this is a flathead, so side valve engine. So they're actually on the side of the engine behind the exhaust and intake. So that's all got to come off. And then we've got some uh, plates that we can pull off and take a look. We'll just see what we can see. And uh, I've got the manual and a whole bunch of online resources. So hopefully we'll be able to get this thing figured out. Let's do it. Normally I would disconnect the exhaust pipe from the manifold, uh, but I don't want to break that and the exhaust pipe's just being held on by bailing wire anyway. So I think I'm just going to take the whole thing off and just let it sit down on the ground. Okay, so the compression is bad, uh, and we need to figure out why. So there's two main reasons why the compression can be bad. So uh, first, we could have the cylinder rings, which uh, keep the oil out of the combustion chamber, could be leaking. Uh, the other possibility is the valves could be leaking. The way that we find that out is uh, usually with a leak down tester. And the way the leak down tester works is you uh, put a gauge and a tube into the um, into the spark plug, bring your uh, cylinder that you're testing up to top dead center, and you pump in some air from an air compressor and you watch the gauge to show you how, um, how much air is staying in the chamber, how much is leaking past either the valves or the rings. Uh, now I show you what this tool looks like, but I don't have one. What a shock. So I'm gonna do a poor man's method. Um, I'm probably not the first person to come up with this. Actually, I guarantee you I'm not. But what I was discovered when I was kind of poking around is the threads on my spark plug holes happen to be identical to the threads on a quarter NPT quick disconnect for my compressor. And my air compressor has an air gauge on it. So the theory is if I bring my cylinder up to top dead center on the compression stroke, screw this in and uh, pump it full of air with my compressor, I can actually watch the gauge on my air compressor and I can also listen at the valves or at the uh, breather tube or the um, oil fill to see if I'm hearing air come past. So that's what we're going to do and see how this works. Wish me luck. Oh, I can feel the air coming past both of those. And the rings. Well, that answers that question. Intake valve. All right, so it's no real surprise that we've got some valve problems. You probably can't see it in there, but you can tell that the tops of these valves are not in good shape. So I can only imagine what the seats look like. But the head's got to come off, and we have to decide are we going to just lap these in and see if we can get them to seal? Or are we going to do a full grind? Do we replace the valves? Are they reusable? It's hard to say. I can see some not so prettiness on the undersides on the stems. Or can we reuse these? Decisions. Well, that's going to wrap this one up. Be sure to join us next time as we pull the head off and get to the bottom of our compression woes. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button down below. Hit the subscribe button so you can follow along with the journey. And as always, 
Thank you for stopping by.